Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Very good. Good. It's the second Sunday of Easter and we celebrate that for the next seven Sundays. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, those who are here in the pews and those who will be listening at home. I am Pastor Bruce Potiker. I am supplying for Pastor Tom, who is on much needed vacation this week. Now, I was reminded that the last time I was here, we had a couple inches of snow that was right in the new year. And so we were blessed with snow, now we're blessed with the gift of rain. Let's celebrate that, okay? Let's begin our worship. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Close us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God, with the joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection, by the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. first lesson is from the fourth chapter of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned 
was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the first and second chapters of 1 John. We declare to you that was what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you, so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of light. Now hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, when Jesus, when the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it at my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Morning, Charlie. Good morning, Pastor Bruce. You're a little wet. Well, I was outside for an hour this morning. <laughs> hey, so how was Easter? Easter was fantastic. I didn't see you. What did you do? Well, all our family got together. All my 13 brothers and sisters, we got together with all our cousins and aunts and uncles. There was like 50 people in the house. Wow. Any, but anything else that you did besides have family together? Oh yeah, that's right. We had dinner, we had ham, and, and we had filling, and we had cheese for dessert. That's great, but did you do anything important? I mean, like really, really important on Easter Sunday? Oh yeah, oh sure we did. We had an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> and boy, did we get a lot of candy and they had, there was nickels and dimes and quarters in the, in, the, in the eggs. And it was a great Sunday. I'll tell you what. You, wait. But, uh, Charlie. Yes? You're missing something really, really important. The most significant thing of all. What did you do on Easter? After that, we took a nap. <laughs> That's an odd end. What did I miss? We had family. They say that's the most important thing. And then we had food, that's always good. And then we had the Easter egg hunt. That was like the most important thing ever. You missed it. What did I miss? Did you go to church? No, we kind of forgot about that because family's more important than church. That's what they all say, right? That's what they all say, but they're all wrong. Well, what do you mean? The whole purpose of Easter it's the resurrection. The whole purpose of Easter is us to respond in faith, to hear the, the, the good news, and then to rejoice it and to live the good news. And you missed it all. I guess I did. But I'm here today. And I'm glad you are. And I'm glad you're worshiping today because it's important us to live the faith, not just to say we believe, to live we believe. I'll try to do that next week too. Pastor Bruce, would you pray? Yes. Grace and Lord, open our hearts to the good news, not just our heads. Open our, our knowledge that you are with us even now. Let us be as Thomas that we can say, my Lord and my God, today and tomorrow, in Jesus' name. Amen. See you later. Bye. If I were to say to you, Christ is risen, you might say, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You got it. How do you know Christ is risen from the dead? Are you certain He is risen from the grave? How do you know? I'll never convince you of that because I cannot. You, each one of you, have to personally come to the point in your life and it changes you from unbelief to belief. Not am I been when you were a little child or halfway through life or just last year. You have to personally come to the place in your life where you can say, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. There must be that time in your life where you can really live the fact that because he lives, I shall live also. And that is my purpose for living. That I can do all things through him who loved me. That Christ is my rock and my salvation in this life of turmoil, in the shifting sands, in this 
time of political upheaval and who knows what else is going on in our world right now. Christ is my rock. On that, I will depend more than anything. Amen? Amen. Amen. But for me, there are two things that need to happen in this journey of faith. First, we always have to look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. In John 20, we heard it last week. On the first day of the week, Mary came to the tomb, and while it was still dark, she carried spices. Why? She carried spices to anoint the dead Jesus. She did not believe the words that Jesus had told her and the disciples so many times, that I shall die and the third day I shall rise again. But she was still in a state of unbelief. But she sees this empty tomb. And so she runs to the disciples, to Peter and John, and they run back with her, and all three of them look into that empty tomb. But do they believe? No. They just see an empty tomb. Even with the, the angel saying he's not here, they still are in a state of unbelief. And so they go away. And the disciples leave. And Mary stays and lingers in the garden, not believing. And she's crying. Why is she crying? Because they took the body away. They stole the body. And it's here that the risen Christ comes to meet her. Meets her in her grief. And he does that for you and me. He meets us where we are. In our grief or in our joy. He meets you where you are. In your belief or in your unbelief. And what does that say about the Christ coming to us every day? And when she recognizes Jesus, she cries out, Raboni, teacher. The evidence of the resurrection. And she runs back to the disciples and replays. She doesn't proclaim, I have seen the teacher. She has seen the Lord. Now the message of salvation has gone from unbelief to belief. From Mary's head to her heart. But not for the rest of them. The two disciples leave the upper room and they start walking toward Emmaus. Now they have heard the testimony of the empty tomb. They have heard the testimony of Mary. I have seen the Lord. But they keep walking away. Walking away from the resurrection. And it's on that road that the risen Lord meets them. And he talks to them. And he has conversation and he has meal with them. And it's during the meal that they recognize the risen Lord, Jesus Christ. And then Jesus disappears. And the words that they say are very important. Listen to the account of Luke 24. They say, were our hearts not burning within us while he was speaking to us? From head to heart knowledge, the burning knowledge that God has done his marvelous work, the heart knowledge that God is changing everything. Now we flip down to, back to John 20. The rest of the disciples stay in the upper room. They have heard it from Mary, and now they have heard it from the two disciples. They have heard this resurrection story and it's starting to sink into their heads. But it has it changed them? Has it touched their heart? No, not yet, because they were still hiding behind locked doors for, for fear of the Jews. Now appears, Jesus appears to them and he says, peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and he shows them the side. And when they see it, 
They rejoice. Now, Mary is probably with them. And I wonder if she said, I told you so. I think I would have. And it's starting to sink in their brains and in their hearts that the Lord is risen because he's there right before them. Now we need to fast forward another week from last Sunday to this Sunday. The disciples see and they believe, but Thomas, not so much. He catches up to the rest and they say, we have seen the Lord. And he says, right. You got to be kidding me. For Thomas, it isn't even head knowledge yet. It's still this total state of unbelief. Unless I see for myself, unless I touch him, his hand and his side, I will not believe. And so they gathered the next week, and I wonder what turmoil was going through Thomas's head that whole week. He knows that he trusts what the disciples said, but he has not seen it. What's going on inside him? And Jesus appears. And he confronts Thomas directly. See my hand. See my side. Touch them. Do not doubt but believe. And what does Thomas shout? My Lord and my God. Now that's the good news of the resurrection. The great news of God's mighty act has changed Thomas from unbelief to head knowledge to heart knowledge. My Lord and my God. As Mary approached the disciples, she didn't say, I think he is alive. The two disciples, when they returned from Emmaus back into the room and tell the rest, they didn't say, Jesus is probably alive again. Hallelujah. The disciples in the upper room did not tell Thomas, there is a high probability that Jesus is risen from the dead. And Thomas, after seeing the risen Lord, did not turn to the rest of the disciples and say, hey guys, what do you think? Is it possible that Christ is risen? No. He didn't say that. He said, my Lord and my God, from head knowledge to heart knowledge. Now comes the big, so what? Whenever you hear a sermon from me or Pastor Tom or anybody, we should answer the question for you, so what? So what does this message of salvation matter to me now? How does this wonderful news of Christ has risen make a difference in my life? Well, here it is, folks. Here's your personal challenge of faith from Christ Jesus himself. The so what? Will you believe all the evidence placed before you in Holy Scripture? Will you allow this message to sink down into you from the knowledge of facts in your head to the life-changing truth in your heart? Did the man burn within you? Will you allow Easter message to change you from an intellectual understanding, yes, I believe, to a heart belief? What's the difference between the two? The head belief, the heart belief. Now, if I was younger, a lot younger, and if I was a tight rope walker, which I am not, but I, let's say I was, and we're not here in Fleetwood, but we're up at Niagara Falls, and you're on the American side, and you see me get up in that tight rope, and I walk across the Niagara River to your side of the falls, and I jump down, and I go, ta-da, and you all applause. This is amazing. What a great act of feat. And then I say to you, do you believe, do you believe that I can carry you on my shoulders back across that river? Do you believe it? And though you might say, 
just seen what I saw? Yeah, I believe you can do that. And then I'll say, great, get on my shoulders, we'll go across. And that's exactly the response. You gotta be kidding me. No way in the world am I gonna go across there with you. I know it in my head, I, you can do it, but trust in my heart, eh, that's a leap of faith that I'm not gonna take. Knowing that Christ is alive is different than living Christ is risen. From saying Jesus is my savior is different than living Christ is my savior. From believing that Christ is my personal Lord and savior and living Christ is Lord my savior. Which means that Christ is my Lord and my Savior in the way I speak, in the way I deal with my family. Christ is my Lord and my Savior, the way I deal with co-workers, the way I am in public and the way I am in private. It means I will allow Christ to change my attitude about life itself. And understand my purpose for living is not about me, but my purpose of living is to proclaim Christ in my life and to live Christ in my life that I might change and I might change others. That I might truly myself and love others today, tomorrow, forever. Living Christ, the risen Lord, it's not a once and done decision. It's a daily event. It's a daily decision to allow my belief to turn into action. That's head knowledge to heart knowledge. It's your decision, not only to believe, but to live a life for Christ. So I end this sermon as I started. If I would say to you, Christ is risen, you would say, He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let those words change your heart and change your life. Amen. Amen. Now having heard God's word for us, let us confess our faith by use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do I do the prayers, or do you do the prayers? Alive in the... Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you got all switched around. It's fine. Go ahead. <laughs>
alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority that they shepherd their peoples in the way of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O God. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Offertory Prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and give gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. If you would take your individual cups, remove the plastic if possible. I always have to do mine before service because it takes me about 10 minutes to figure it out. For those who are worshiping at home, I invite you to pause and go to spread of wine or bread and something to drink and partake as well. My cue will be when you look up at me, which means you're ready.
Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Well, spring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts, satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love we bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.